Blue pigment is actually quite rare in nature, and if you see a bird that appears blue, it's usually because of structural color. Light interacts with structures in the feathers that make it appear blue. Here's an example. If we have a peacock feather, okay, and sunlight shines directly on it, okay, so we have a beam of sunlight that comes in, hits directly on the feather. At an angle of 15 degrees from that, the light will appear blue. And so I have this, blue light is preferentially sent in this direction, okay? This is due to diffraction. This feather, <clears throat> there are structures inside the feather. There's little melanin bands inside the feather here, okay? There are space at a certain spacing that produces diffraction. This is a reflection grading, okay? This is a reflection grading. So as we prepare to set up this problem, what we'll do is this. We're going to recognize that this problem is about peacock feathers, but really it's a question about diffraction gratings or reflection gratings, which work just like diffraction gratings. And so let's take a look at this. There's a certain spacing of the melanin bands in the feathers, okay, which is D, okay? And that is just similar to the D that's the spacing of the lines in a diffraction grating. <clears throat> now, I was getting ready to solve. Let's go ahead and think about what the answer is likely to be. When I've seen problems like this, the spacings are on the order of 1 to 2 microns. That's kind of what I've seen typically. And so I'm going to expect an answer that's somewhat in this range. Well, here's the situation. Blue light is reflected at a 15 degree angle by a reflection grating with a spacing of D. Well, the basic relationship for diffraction gratings is this. D times sine theta is equal to M times lambda. Now, that works for a diffraction grating that works by transmission as well as one that works for reflection. What do we use for the different numbers? Well, D is what we're looking for, okay? How about the wavelength? We're told this corresponds to diffraction for light of wavelength 470 nanometers, okay? Theta is 15 degrees, but how about M? What do we use for the order of the diffraction? Well, we're told that it appears black blue when it's viewed from 15 degrees on the other side of the instant beam of the sunlight. Let's assume that's the first place that this occurs, and let's assume that this corresponds to M equals 1. We're not told, but that's a reasonable assumption to make. And with all those assumptions, with all those clarifications in place, we're ready to solve. So let's move over here and do just that. Okay, here's my relationship. D is equal to m times lambda divided by the sine of theta. And we know what t is for the different numbers, okay? Lambda is equal to 470 nanometers. m is equal to 1. Theta is equal to 15 degrees. Now, sine of theta is just a number. m is just a number. So I'm going to leave this wavelength in nanometers, and so the result will be returned in nanometers. If I put these numbers in my calculator and I compute a value for D, that's the spacing of the melanin bands in the feather, what I get is 1800 nanometers, and that's to two significant figures because this is a two significant figure problem. But I'm going to express this in microns so I can make better sense of it. 1800 nanometers corresponds to 1.8 microns because nano is 10 to the minus 9th, micro is 10 to the minus 6th, and so there's a factor of 1000 between these two. So 1.8 microns is what we get for the spacing of the bands. And at the start, I said I was expecting something in the range of 1 to 2 microns, and so our answer is right within the range of what we expect for such structures that produce colors in nature. And so a result matches our understanding of how the world works.